Today I will tell you about the dramatic film of 2021 based on real events called The Mad Women's Ball. Eugene, a young woman with unusual abilities, is sent to a psychiatric clinic by her father after experiencing seizures and claiming to communicate with spirits. In the clinic, she faces harsh treatments and exploitation, but also finds allies. My name is Alex and welcome to my channel. Eugene, along with thousands of people, sees off the famous writer Victor Hugo during the ceremony. The girl has a seizure, but she manages to stop herself in time. Late for dinner, Eugene lies to her parents that she was at a friend's house, and only her brother Theophile quietly smiles, understanding that his sister is not telling the truth. To change the subject, the guy starts talking about the upcoming debates and Eugene asks permission to attend the event with her brother, but her father sharply refuses, reminding her that it is not fitting for a lady to participate in such things. Before going to bed, the girl goes into the bathroom and has another seizure during which she talks to someone, but Eugene manages to regain control of herself again. Notice the grandmother waiting for her granddaughter for the regular evening ritual. In the morning, Tell gathers for the debates and finds her sister in his carriage, whom her father strictly forbade to go, but the girl does not intend to go to the meeting, only asking her brother to take her to the outskirts of the city where she can quietly read a book and smoke in secret from her strict parents. The disgruntled guy, although not thrilled with the idea and his participation, cannot refuse his beloved sister. Buying a fresh bun, Eugene comes to a simple cafe where, sipping a cigarette, she reads poems, glancing at the guy at the neighboring table. Noticing this, the stranger starts a conversation and lends the girl a book about spirits, leaving a note with his name on the first page and taking a promise from her to meet again to get the book back. In the evening, reading the gifted book, Eugene does not share her acquaintance with her brother. This one puts her head on her sister's lap and listens to her reading. The next day, the family goes to the neighboring estate where Theophile's fiancé lives, and this union is very important for the father and he is extremely displeased when Eugene again snaps, offending the young lady. Because of this, a conflict arises in the family. Christmas Eve comes, Eugene and Theophile put up a Christmas tree, and the young people climb into the attic to get the Christmas decorations. At this moment, Eugene has another seizure, and she confesses to Theophile that she now sees many different spirits, not just one man as before. Eugene confides in her brother and asks him not to be afraid, because in the book that the guy from the cafe lent her, it is written that there are many like her. Eugene goes to her grandmother's bedroom again to comb and put her to bed, but at some point, the girl drops all her things and starts rummaging through the closet, from where she pulls out a pendant that her relative lost 40 years ago. When the grandmother asks where she found out about it, the girl confesses that her deceased grandfather told her about it. In the morning, the girl is met by her worried mother, who says that she and her father are going to the neighboring estate again, so the woman asks her daughter to behave properly and not say anything unnecessary. Noticing tears in her mother's eyes, Eugene thinks that this is only concern for her behavior, so hugging her mother, the girl, suspecting nothing, gets ready to visit the guests on the way and does not notice the travel bag at her father's feet and realizes that they are clearly not going to visit. Looking out the window, the girl does not recognize the road but seeing mentally ill women in the garden, she understands everything. Unfortunately, it turns out to be too late. The carriage stops at the gates of the psychiatric clinic where the father brought Eugene after Theophile shared his and her secret with him. The medical staff immediately takes the girl by the arms, ignoring her screams, and only Theophile could not keep his composure, leaning over the carriage because he felt sick. After hesitating for a moment, the head of the family signed the document in which he indicated his consent to the compulsory treatment of his daughter. The head nurse, Genevieve, examines the newcomer without ceremony and immediately notes that any disobedience here threatens with a solitary cell. Eugene enters the common dormitory and immediately goes into shock from where she ended up. Dozens of women, half of whom behave absolutely inadequately, immediately try to touch the young patient, but Louisa, a girl with visible mental problems, comes to the girl's aid, although it seems that they were caused here by the local treatment and environment. The patient incessantly talks about something, talking about her engagement to the young Dr. Jules and about the fact that every year in their clinic there is a costume ball for the rich and officials. During lunch, Louisa introduces the newcomer to the locals, telling in detail about each patient. The first night is very hard for Eugene, and she practically does not sleep, and in the morning, the girl watches as the head nurse takes Louisa somewhere, 
and from their conversation, it becomes clear that this is a regular practice. Luise is brought to a large office where dozens of doctors have gathered, among whom is Jules, smiling at the patient so that no one else notices. The chief doctor of the hospital, Dr. Charcot, begins a hypnosis session, and when the girl falls to the floor, he calmly steps over her and says goodbye to everyone until the next procedure. The patient is transferred to the medical room where she comes to her senses, and Dr. Jules comes to visit her, dismissing the medical staff and, taking advantage of the girl's naivety, tells her that very soon, at the costume ball, he will make her a proposal. After that, the doctor puts one hand under the girl's dress and pleasures himself with the other hand. Taking advantage of a small free moment, Genevieve runs home to visit her elderly father and have lunch with him, telling him the latest news from the clinic. Returning to work, Eugene goes up to visit the newcomer, and Eugene addresses the nurse on behalf of the blonde and the deceased sister. The woman does not want to hear and believe what the madwoman is saying, ordering her to shut up. The doctor examines the patients and prescribes Eugene cold water therapy with pieces of ice, which finally breaks the girl. Tell tracks down Genevieve and asks her to help Eugene, confessing that he is very sorry for what he did. The man asks the nurse to pass the girl a book. After thinking for a while, the employee says that she is not a messenger, but agrees to give the book only on the condition that the girl connects with her deceased sister and helps them talk. One night, Eugene brings the patient to her office where they plan to witness the ritual. Eugene cannot connect with the blonde for a long time, but then the deceased comes out and reports that her sister became ill at their house in the kitchen. Dropping everything, the woman runs home and indeed finds the man after the seizure. When he asks his daughter how she found out about what happened, Genevieve decides to confess, but only receives criticism and accusations of madness from her father. After another session of hypnotherapy, Eugene's legs and half of her body fail. Seeing this, Eugene can no longer keep silent and tells the doctors everything she thinks about it, not mincing words and accusations. For this, the girl is declared dangerous and transferred to a solitary dark cell in the department headed by the stern gene. Food is passed to the patients through a window at the bottom of the door, and the only shutters open only from time to time. It seems that all this therapy is aimed only at finally breaking the will of the sick. One day, when Jean comes to mock again, Eugene tells the supervisor that she communicates with her deceased mother and knows all her secrets. For this, the nurse uses force and lets go of the girl's throat only when she has nothing to breathe. Genevieve remembers all this time about what happened and, unable to bear the secret, tells the girl that she will help her escape from the clinic, she just needs to be patient a little longer. The nurse convinces Dr. Charcot that the patient has finally lost her will and is no longer dangerous. After that, the doctor gives the go-ahead to transfer the girl back to the general ward where everyone is preparing for the upcoming ball. Eugene finds Louisa in a wheelchair, but the girl does not lose her spirit and still believes in her upcoming marriage and a happy future. At night, Eugene manages to read the note that Genevieve secretly passed to her during the transfer. A similar secret letter with an invitation to the ball is received by Theophile. The ball evening comes, rich and influential guests arrive at the clinic, wishing to have fun with the mentally ill patients. Theophile also arrives by invitation and almost immediately finds his sister, inviting her to dance. Jean does not take her eyes off the couple, suspecting them of collusion with Genevieve. The fun begins, some of the guests openly mock the strange women, some plan to fulfill their animal fantasies, treating the patients to strong drinks and whispering sweet words in their ears. Taking advantage of the commotion, Eugene manages to secretly take Eugene to her office and dress her in ordinary clothes, heading with them to the exit. Jules also took advantage of the fun, taking Louisa's wheelchair, he brought it to an empty office and, telling the girl what will happen now, their wedding ceremony, understanding that the paralyzed girl cannot resist, the doctor tipped her over on the table, finally achieving what he had long dreamed of. One of the elderly patients who had been in the clinic for 25 years for avenging her husband's infidelity burst into the office at the moment when Jules was already in full swing, but this did not prevent the old woman from beating him in all the important places. Jean notices the disappearance of the patient and her brother and rushes in search of them. Noticing the fugitives in the corridor, the nurse raises the alarm, but Eugene manages to take the couple out the gate where a carriage is waiting for them. The nurse herself remains on the territory of the clinic, refusing to run away with Eugene. A year later, Eugene writes a letter to a friend, telling her that she is free and happy living far away from everyone and no longer hides her abilities, 
helping those who need it. Genevieve reads about this with a smile, sitting on a bench in the clinic's park, but now she walks in this park not as a nurse, but as a patient. Such was the price of freedom for Eugene. Thank you for watching. Write in the comments what you think about this film and do not forget to support us with likes and subscriptions.